Hey guys, it's Ropsy back with Paperless Student. In today's video, we are going to be doing a full review of OneNote on the iPad Pro. I haven't done a video to show you guys how I actually use this application, but I will be studying for an exam in a few weeks time, so I will show you guys how I use this application then, because I mostly use this application for studying for my exams and doing study questions and my rough notes, basically. OneNote is a great application from Microsoft. It's free and it's amazing because it's like a combination of Microsoft Word and a note-taking application. So to start using this application, you have to log in. I personally don't like this about the application. I resist actively any application that requires me to log in. But I owe it to you guys to make sure that I give you all the information I know and good as to what applications you can use for your paperless experience. This is why I'm doing this review for you guys. So organization of notes in OneNote is complicated but very efficient. You can create a notebook which further divides into sections and then into pages. Like for example, I can make a subject cardiology and split it into sections which will be lectures, classes and study notes. And then I can create pages containing specific topics in each of these sections. It's difficult to misplace anything with that level of organization. The user interface in this app is typical of a Microsoft application, meaning that if you've created a document on Microsoft Word or a presentation, you know how to use this application, even with all the slight modifications it has for the iPad Pro. On the Home tab, you can get all options that you need for typing. Each time you type, the text you're typing is put in a text box, so it's not freely written in prose as you would in Microsoft Word. The text box disappears after typing though. This means that your text can virtually go on any part of the page, which is kind of cool. You can change the font type, download as many as you like from the collection offered. You can change the size, the color. You can make it bold, italic, underline, or strike through words. You can highlight, use bullets in the text and or numbering. There seems to be little options for the bullets and numbers though, at least not as many as you'd get in other Microsoft applications. You can also format your paragraphs. You can change the alignment of the sentences. There are some default settings for headings that you can tamper with, whatever suits your fancy. Depending on the look that you're going for, you can really customize your text in this application. Your tag icon has so much to offer, so you can create to-do lists, highlight text as important or as a question. You can enter or type highlighted text for you to help, to help you to remember later. The options you have on the tab icon alone deserve a video of their own. Anyone can surely have fun with them. So that's something that's kind of exciting about OneNote. The insert tab allows you to add tables, which you can edit. Though your table options are only limited to adding or deleting rows and columns, you can also select parts of the table or the table itself, which I think should suffice. You don't really have as many customizing options for your tab, for your tables as you have in other Microsoft applications. You can also add photos and you can take some yourselves. You can record audio, but as long as you're recording something, you can't actually write anything on the page, which is limiting, especially if you want to take lecture notes and record simultaneously. I doubt anyone will find that kind of audio recording useful. You can attach files from the local files manager and you can also add PDF printouts. So. A PDF, a PDF printout is actually a document that you can annotate as opposed to a small little icon of the document. You can add web links too. This tool doesn't work for hyperlinks though, meaning you can't put hyperlinks to jump through your notes. Unfortunately, you can't do that. You can insert an equation. You can insert a date. Yeah. The drawing tab is for your handwriting, so this is where you can do all your handwriting with your Apple Pencil. The A icon is for typing, then followed by the lesser tool that lets you select sections of your documents, text, handwriting, photos, etc. Any tiny movable sections of your documents really. You can cut, copy, paste, delete, then you have an eraser which cleans up any mess. It doesn't feel very natural though. The pen tool has different colors that you can customize at will, meaning that you can have virtually any color you want. Writing on the page feels natural and great. In fact, Microsoft apps are amazing in terms of handwriting technology. They are on top of their game on the iPad Pro, so try them out. 
You also have another writing tool. It writes and functions exactly like the pen tool, but it's thicker, which means it's something that you'd use for charts or for writing headings and stuff like that. It's not something that you'd use to write your notes, but to put headings and tags for diagrams and stuff for your notes. Um, you also have a highlighting tool that works great. Highlighting in OneNote makes your highlights pop out of the page, which is something I like. I always like highlights that make information pop out than ones that you know deem the information the handwriting icon at the end of the toolbar is for a few settings you can choose to draw with the touch of your finger but mine is turn off i turn off this option because it helps with palm rejection the last tab is the view tab which lets you customize how your page looks like but it also has a tool that will ena enable you to check your spellings for your documents so you can either turn it off or on I leave mine on. The next tool is one that will make you see the 100% size of your page. I use this tool a lot because it helps me to orient myself, which helps me when I'm working in the application because there's times when I zoom out or when I zoom in and I can't really remember the size of my page or I've lost the sense of the size of my page. I find this tool useful. And the next tool will allow you to fit the page into the available space, which varies depending on whether or not you're using split view. So if you're using split view, the fit to page will probably be smaller than it is when you're not using split view. And you can also customize the color of your pages. You don't really have a white variety as you do for the pen tool, but you have 16 colors to choose from, which I think is quite decent for just selecting the color of your page. Um, you can also add grids, lined paper or grid paper to work with, which makes writing notes a whole lot easier and more convenient. But the lines are only blue and you can't change the colors. It bugs me a little, but I just feel like if I can't change the color of the lines, why couldn't they leave it like black or something, you know? Or another neutral color am i just being petty i am and i you can also protect sections of your notes with a password something useful i like that you can protect certain sections and not the whole notebook i think it's it's quite cool that you have that much control on what you protect in your settings you can log in into your account or you can change your login details and you can also add a few more microsoft cloud services onedrive onedrive business and the quick notes tab, you sh it shows your recent notes. Under edit and view, um, you can choose your default font and default default font size. And you also have an option to hide author I identity when sharing your notes. I left my automatic sync on, but this is really useful if you're going to be using OneNote on multiple devices, which I don't. You can also tamper with settings for your notifications. I don't like notifications. I find them very disrupting, so I always have my notifications turned off. The last option is to change navigation settings where you want to add your pages. Like you can add your pages at the top of, of your page list. You can add at the bottom of your page list or you can add below a selected page. I chose below a selected page because it gives me more control on where exactly add my page then you can also choose whether or not page previews show the rest of the settings are nothing you'll need but you can just read about them if you like when all is said and done you can invite people to share your notebook allow them to edit the notebook if you like or you can not allow them to edit it you can type their names or email or just get them from the contacts to share with them or you can just copy the link of your notebook and share it wherever you like on Facebook, on WhatsApp with people, email. And you can also, if you have email set up, then you can just send a page via email. You can just email the page. But this is the reason why I don't like OneNote. Basically, you can't share your notebooks. I get angry just thinking about it. Unless you're going to be writing your notes that you're never going to share with anyone or want to open another app, you shouldn't be using OneNote. That's it for the full review of OneNote. What app review would you guys like to see next on Paperless Student? Let me know. I hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share the video and spread paperless love. If you're new to my channel, hi. Subscribe so you don't miss out on anything that I'll be uploading in the future. So until next time, guys. Bye. I will see you in the next video.